Hello, in this video, we're going to be looking at the brand new Blender 2.8 interface. To download Blender 2.8, head over to blender.org and then go to download and simply download Blender from there. At the time of recording, Blender 2.8 wasn't uh, made official yet, we're still on Blender 2.79. If that is also the case for you, just head over here and click latest experimental builds. If you see version 2.8 over here, just go ahead and click download Blender. So at this time, I'm just going to go ahead and download an experimental build over here. And then just go ahead and select the version that's for you. So in this case, mine is a Windows 64 bit. Once it's downloaded, go into the zip file and extract it somewhere. Okay, so once downloaded, just go ahead and scroll down and look for the blender.exe and double click it. Sometimes you might get this popping up. Uh, the main reason is because Blender is still in alpha stage, so it's not yet a recognized app yet. So anyway, it's just I, I trust Blender, so I'm just gonna run anyway. There you go, you've now successfully installed Blender 2.8. Note that if you downloaded Blender as a zip file, you can store the extracted folder onto a USB disk this way you can pretty much have Blender on the go on any computer anywhere in the world. So once I open up Blender 2.8, I'm presented with this screen. If you're more comfortable with using the shortcuts and the input of your of these other 3D software, 3ds Max, the previous Blender 2.7 and Maya, you can uh, go ahead and select them. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the new Blender 2.8 because there's a lot of new changes in there that we're going to have to eventually get used to because Blender 2.8 is the future. So if I just click out, the first thing I see is this interface over here. This interface, although it looks quite similar to Blender 2.7, it is a little bit strikingly different. So if I just toggle between Blender 2.7 and Blender 2.8, first thing you'll notice is that Blender 2.7 had a much more grey look, uh, whereas Blender 2.8 has a darker, more striking look. Also, the 3D viewport appears to be much bigger. Uh, then Blender 2.7, therefore, therefore giving the 3D artist a much more immersive experience. Other than that, Blender 2.8 comes with a host of awesome new features that you wouldn't find in Blender 2.7 by default. Blender 2.8 now comes with a new real-time rendering engine called Eevee. It has the capability of producing awesome looking results. If you check out some YouTube videos of what other people have done, you'll just see some of the cool looking results that you can get out of the new real-time rendering engine. So no more need to wait hours and hours to get an animation done. Blender 2.8 has now better support for drawing. So if you have a graphics tablet with a pen, uh, you will find Blender 2.8 to be a lot more fun to use and it also has improved support for 2D animation. So you can actually create a 2D animation movie all within Blender. Overall, you'll find that Blender 2.8 is far more user-friendly than Blender 2.7 and below. Blender has had a sort of poor reputation in the past where it had a non-user-friendly kind of an interface where people have mentioned that it sort of resembled a space station kind of an interface. But the new Blender 2.8 aims to be a lot more user-friendly and a lot more easier to work with. You'll find that the learning curve, or more like the learning time, will be a lot more quicker from being an absolute beginner of Blender to actually creating awesome 3D projects like films and games and whatever. So, let's begin. Uh, I'm just going to give an overall overview of the Blender user interface. All of Blender is composed of windows. So, this here is one window, this here is another window, and this here is another window. You can change windows by clicking on the top left and just changing it to any view. So right now we're in the 3D view, I can change it to the video, video sequence view. I can change it to the timeline view. And each window serves one main function. So the 3D viewport is where you will work with the uh, 3D objects in your scene. The properties window, uh, adjust the properties of your objects in the 3D viewport, as well as other properties in your Blender file, such as the render settings, the world settings, and things like that. The outliner window is where you will see the, the list of all your objects in Blender. If you don't like this uh, layout, it's very, very easy to create your own layouts. You just have to hover over one of the corners of the windows, and if you left click and drag left, you'll create a new window vertically, 
or if you left click and drag down or up you'll create a window horizontally now you can change the view of how you want so for example if you want this view to have the front view this view to have the side view and this view to have a sort of perspective view then you can do that very easy so you have the front right and it's very very easy to create your own layouts if you want to collapse the windows uh, just have to left click and then move your mouse in the opposite direction of the window so don't move up otherwise you'll create a new window instead go in the opposite direction so go down and where you see the arrow that's the window that will be uh, closed so I can instead of, instead of going down I can also go up and remove that window for instance very quick and easy to create new windows in blender to serve new functions so if I want to work on an animation I can drag our new window like that and just like in blender 2.7 I can change this to the timeline editor and now I can work on animation okay so that is how you use windows so these tabs here represent workspaces. So each workspace is pretty much a, an organization of the different layouts in order to serve the main function of that workspace. That did not make much sense, I know. Basically, what that means is when you go into these work, this workspace, uh, it will organize the layouts just like how we've been dragging new windows in such a way that it is optimal for the function that you are carrying out. So for example, if I want to do animation, um, this is the best layout for animation according to Blender. If you want to do uh, comp compositing, this is the best layout. If you want to do an, um, texture painting, this is the best layout. If you want to do modeling, this is the best layout. Of course, you can create your own layout by hitting the plus key. And then, for example, if I create, if I drag out a new window over here, sorry, if I just drag out one new window here and say I just change this to, I don't know, texture editor. Um, and I want this to be my new layout. Just hit plus, duplicate current, and you have a new option over here. You can double click on it and name it whatever you like. So I'm just gonna call it my layout. There I have my layout. Uh, at the time of recording, I'm not able to move the, the tab uh, to where I want it. Maybe it is possible, maybe not, but I'm not sure how to do that. Maybe in your version of Blender it's possible, but since I'm using it in uh, I'm using the alpha version of Blender, I don't have that option yet. Workspaces don't only contain the different layouts of Blender, uh, it also saves some uh, information about some properties of the current layout that you're working in. So for example, in the 3D viewport, you could, instead of being in the object mode, you could be in edit mode. So you can save this in the layout as well. So for example, when I go to sculpt mode, you'll see that it is a 3D viewport, but in sculpt mode. So in general, if you're creating your own layouts, how would you set this? Well, you'd go into the tool settings of the properties window and then under workspace, you save uh, the mode to sculpt mode. So this is where you save you, all your properties. Now let's look at collections. So if you were coming from Blender 2.7, you will notice that um, by default, the outliner doesn't have any collections. It just lists out all the objects that you have in your scene. Uh, and you have these layers tabs over here. So here you can have like, you know, for example, I can move this object to a different layer. So in this layer, you have just the camera and the lamp. In this layer, you have just the cube and you can combine both those layers if you want. In Blender 2.8, you don't have layers anymore. It's all gone. They removed it completely. As we saw in Blender, if you want to move an object from one layer to another, you press M and then change layer. In Blender 2.8, you also do the same thing. You can press M and then change different layers. If you want to create a new collection, just press M and then hit plus new collection and I'll call it collection two, for example. And now we, our cube is now moved to a different layer. If I want to add the cube to multiple collections, so say I want to have the cube on available on both collections, press shift M, you have to press shift by the way, and move it to collection one. So now the cube is available in both collections. So basically everything in your 3D viewport is an object and each object must be a part of one or more collections so we have the parent collection which is called the scene collection and then other child collections like that so uh, we can have a collection within a collection you can press new new collection have a, a sub collection cool so let's move on next scenes this is quite basic but you can have multiple scenes in a blender file so you can have one scene like this you can press plus and create a new scene over here 
For example, in this scene, you could have, say, for example, a character at home speaking on the phone. And in this scene, you could have another character sitting in a restaurant uh, answering the phone. So it's just quite useful for that. Um, also, we have view layers here. This is a, a bit of a slightly for more advanced 3D artists, but basically the view layer is to combine different passes uh, for rendering and compositing purposes. So for example, you could have one layer that just does the combined Z pass, another layer for uh, the mist and ambient occlusion pass. That's basically it. Um, also, I need to let you know that the user preferences uh, in Blender is now moved to edit user preferences. So you can find your user preferences here. So here you can change things like your system settings, what uh, keys you want to use, what keys you want to disable, uh, what rendering, what uh, graphics card you want to use, uh, the themes you can change, of course, you can make it look like Maya. That's, that's how Maya looks like. You can make it look like Blender 2.7. That's how the old Blender 2.7 looked like. You can make it look like whatever suits your style, you can now make it. But I'm going to reset to default and I'll just keep it that way. That's the user preferences. Another way to do user preferences is to hit F4 um, and user preferences that way. User preferences is also the place to uh, enable add-ons and install new add-ons. That is the Blender user interface in a nutshell.